Hey everybody, Shabo here, back from another video, and today I will be showing you how to make cutscenes in Roblox. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to View and make sure you have Properties and Explorer open. You can click on them here, and they should appear on your screen somewhere. Next, we're going to go to Server Script Service, insert our script. If you already have one, you can just use that. Next, we're going to go to Starter Player, open it, go to Starter Player Scripts, right click, Insert Object, and then a local script. And you can delete this line of code in both of the scripts because it is not needed. Now we're going to set up a remote event, which is going to tell the client to play an animation, which is going to be our cutscene. So replicated storage, we're going to right click it, Insert Object, and this time enter a remote event. Then I'm just going to name it cutscene. And then just for the fun of it, I'm going to make a part that I'm going to move around during the cutscene. Just a big red part. I'm going to be moving this around in the cutscene along with the camera. Next, we're going to go to our script. And now we're going to set up some variables. So local replicated storage equals game gets service replicated storage. Then local players equals game get service players. Then local event equals replicated storage, wait for child cutscene. And then next we're going to make a function. So local function play cutscene. Event fire all clients. And then I'm just going to put an ID just in case you want multiple cutscenes. I'll be showing you how to do that too. And then next we're going to just put task.wait so we can wait for the players to load in. And then play cutscene. What this is going to do. This is getting all the variables, and then it's going to fire this event for every client in the game, telling them to play an animation. We wait four seconds, and then we fire the function. Next, we're going to go to the local script, and we're going to set up some variables here too. So local rep storage equals game with service replicated storage. Local event equals replicated storage. Wait for child cutscene. And then local tween service equals game get service tween service. We're going to be using this service to animate things like parts and stuff that we can't animate normally. And then local camera equals workspace dot current camera. And now we're going to make an event on the client. So local function on event, then ID. And it should look like this. If ID equals zero. And then we're going to put our cutscene code inside of here. We're going to hook up this event to this function. So event.onClientEvent, event, connect on event. Next, we're going to play the cutscene. So for this, we're just going to move the camera around and also this part. So to get the C frames, which is basically the location of the camera, I just get a part like this. I just position it correctly. And to get the rotation of it, I just insert object, surface selection, set the Adorni to this, change the target surface to front and properties, and then if you pretend this is the camera, we can rotate it to this. And then we get the C frame of this, and we'll be able to see through this part, because we're going to copy this part C frame. And then we're going to apply it to the camera and it'll locate our camera to here. So we're going to want to keep this part selected and scroll down to transform and properties. You'll see the C frame. We're going to go to the local script and then we're going to put local C frame one, go C frame dot new, negative 14 port nine. We're going to copy this and we can just paste it here. You can highlight this, copy, and then you can right click and paste here or press control V and control C for this. Next we're going to move the camera to there. So first camera dot camera type equals enum dot camera type dot scriptable, which will stop the camera from moving around back to the character. And then we can change its C frame to this. And then I'll move the camera to here. We're also going to need the rotation, so we can go back to C frame one variable times C frame dot angles. You can copy this. But if it's not a zero, then you're going to want to put this in front of it. Put it inside of this. That'll make sure the rotation applies correctly. 
and then our camera should move once we test it. So I'm going to click play. And as you can see, our camera moves to the location that we set it to. Now if you wanted to move the camera, we can just move this and then copy it to C-frame again. So I'm going to move it here. Then we go back to the local script to make a new variable, local C-frame 2 and then repeat the same steps. So properties, copy position, and then the further rotation, time cframe.angles, paste that there. We I put this, and then next we're going to move it to there. So local info equals tween info.new. This is the info we're going to be using for the tween. So how, how long it's going to last. So one second, how much time it takes to get from there to here. So I'm going to put one second. And then for the easing style, you can put whatever you want. I can, I'm going to put back so it'll kind of bounce to the position instead of just moving normally. Then enum.easingdirection.out. So it'll move here, bounce a bit, and then just settle here. The next local camera go to one equals this. And camera.goto1.cframe equals cf2. Next, we're going to make the tween. So local tween one. It was tween service create camera info camera go to one. And then tween one play. So it'll play the animation of the camera going to that location. I'm gonna make it wait one second before it moves. And as you can see, if we twit if we test here, our camera goes here, and then it'll bounce to here. Now if you wanted to move the part, for example, I'm gonna be moving this part to here. You can basically just copy this, paste it, change the variable name to the part go to one. Then next we're going to make another C frame, but for the part this time. So I cloned it and then I got this here. I'm going to be removing this after. I should probably remove this now. I'm going to remove this after. We're just using this to get the position and orientation. Since I'm only changing the position, Instead of changing the C frame here, we can just do it to position, then local part position equals vector 3.new. Copy, paste, and then this will only move the position and then part position. Next, we're going to set a variable for the part because we need the part. I'm going to have to name it something, so moving part. You can name it by going to properties and naming it. Next, we're going to set the variable for it. So, local moving part goes workspace, wait for, wait for child moving part. It'll wait for it to load in if it somehow hasn't already. Somehow. It'll wait for it to load in. Then, we're going to wait another second. Then, we're going to copy this local tween2 instead of tween1. Moving part. You can also make another one for this. So I'm going to make another one. Local info2. Tween info.new. 3 enumdizing style dot and then whatever then whatever and then info two and then part go to one now what this should do is move the camera and then move the part and since we probably want it to turn back to normal after our cutscene tasks dot wait and then it'll just wait a little bit and then we can set it to normal by just setting it like this camera dot camera type equals enum dot camera type dot custom and then our cutscene should be done. So we can click play. And now it'll put our camera, it'll move it, and then it'll move the part. And then our cutscene ends and we're back to our character. Now if you wanted to play an animation, so I'm gonna go to here using Moon Animator. If you don't have Moon Animator yet, I recommend getting it. You can get it by going to the toolbox it's here in view. Going to plugin, so we go to the marketplace, plugins, and then Moon Animator 2 right here. It's a really good plugin for animating and stuff. I'm going to get rid of the toolbox and the character inserter. Presets R6. Then I'm just going to make a quick animation real quick. Now that I've finished my animation, I'm going to go to File and Export It. If you're using a different animator, then you just export it with how you would export it in that animation system instead. 
it should be under a file section if there is one and then exporting then once you clicked export if it has a keyframe sequence it automatically selects it you want to right click that save to roblox and then I'm just going to name it cutscene animation submit and then copy the ID by clicking this right here close it you can close your animator and then we're going to go to explore go to the thing that we're animating right click it insert object animation and then paste the animation ID into here in properties and then enter it should automatically fill in the this right here and then next we're going to play the animation so tasks.wait5 we're going to set our variable for the th for the character we're animating so local character as workspace with child r6 and then since we're animating humanoid we can do humanoid goes character with for child humanoid if it doesn't have a humanoid you'd want to insert an animation controller and then put an animator inside of the animation controller but for this reason put an animator inside of the humanoid if there isn't one already then local animator equals humanoid with for child animator and then we're going to play the animation so local anim equals animator load animation character with for child animation so it is going to go to the animator tell it to load this and then next we can play it so I'm going to play it after three seconds right here and then as you can see when I press play our cutscene starts moves the camera moves the part and then plays an animation on this character here. And then our cutscene ends. And that's how you make a cutscene in Roblox. Make sure to slap that like button and punch the subscribe button. Peace. Also make sure to check out my game in the description below.